413. Once you get there, if you'll please stand. <clears throat> Just tell me to get a move on. All right. Father, we thank you again for this day. We ask now for your blessings. I pray, O oh Lord, that as you help us as we uh, uh, gather to death, together today, that we would focus upon you and we focus upon the Word of God. Teach us, bless us, and keep us close. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, 413, sound the battle cry.
All right, 313. I'm sorry, it was a little. up, how well we might know it. 418, must I go in empty handed? How many of you know this? Okay. Yeah, that, there you go, like this. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and we'll, we're going to try it and we're going to try to learn a little bit of it. Must I go in empty handed?
surprised that we didn't know it. Anyway, we are going to learn that. I've not been real diligent. I've not been real good at here uh, adding songs here lately, but uh, we'll get back into that very soon. Um, all right, if you'd go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to um, 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2. We had um, been talking about Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, um, talked a lot. And now we're, we're, we're kind of resting that out and finishing that. And now we're going on to, to verse 9. And verse 9 says, And the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. The Lord knoweth. Um, you know, I talk to people back and forth that don't believe God knows everything. They don't believe in his omniscience. They don't believe in his omnipotent. They don't believe in a lot about God. And to be quite honest with you, if you don't believe in those things about God, then he's not God. At least he isn't to you, okay? Because God is. Uh, there can be nothing stronger, nothing bigger, nothing more of anything than God is. And so understanding if anything is, then it's God instead of God. And so the Lord knoweth. This is really, to me, is a standalone statement. God knows. You know, um, we use that as a term sometimes. We get into frustration or we have problems and we go, you know, the Lord knows. And you just, you write it off. God knows. He knew I was going to get into this. He knew I'd go through this. And we just write it off. You know, Lord. And so it's a, to me, it's a standalone statement of God's knowledge. It is a fact to me. Um, I, well, let me just put it this way. There's a bumper sticker that says, um, God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. That's a lie. God said it. It's settled. Doesn't matter what you believe, <laughs> you know. And isn't that true though? That you that the middle part there is I believe it is man's uh, reasoning. Just because I believe it, I mean, no, it doesn't. But when God says it's done, it's over. It's it's complete. And so the fact that He knows all things, and therefore, because He does, He knows exactly what we need, what's needed in any situation, how to deliver us. He said, "The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations." Um, it, there isn't a situation that you can face in life that God cannot bring you through. And interesting, this word uh, to deliver carries the idea in one of its ways it's translated is to rescue. To draw to himself, if you would. So God does know his knowledge is complete. Um, we had uh, jumped ahead and went through uh, the fear of God and listed those, but also have a little list here. And uh, if you would, go to uh, uh, First Chronicles. Uh, 28, we'll flip through a few of these verses. First uh, Chronicles 28, verse 9. And the Bible says this, in First Chronicles 28, verse 9, it says, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. 
For the Lord searcheth all hearts, and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou, thou forsake him, he will be found God knows. I mean, you just can't get away from God's knowledge. You also have 1 Kings. You know, I am going the wrong direction. 1 Kings 8, 3, 9, 39. Kind of hurts you. It messes you up when you go the wrong direction in your Bible. So 1 Kings 8, 39 says this. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. Oh, he knows the hearts of men. And for thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men. There is nobody... God doesn't know. There's no heart he doesn't understand and know the thoughts uh, and tents uh, of those hearts as well. And then we go on to Isaiah. Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. Sorry. And it's 9 through 10. Forty-six, nine through 10. And the Bible says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. The end from the beginning. And from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. You know, into the beginning. He knows it all. I mean, I kind of, I would think that they would word this the beginning to the end. But they did this opposite. And I find that amazing that, that uh, they've done that. Now again, uh, Psalms uh, 44. Psalms 44, 21. Yeah, the, I don't normally run you around too much. Um, 44, 21. And the Bible says, Shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. God knows again. Uh, and uh, going to Psalms 139. And it's verse 4. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. <laughs> he knows our speech. He knows when we go speak and what we go speak. God knows it all. And then Psalms 147, and these are not all, these are just a few. Uh, Psalms 147, 4 and 5. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. You know, I kind of look forward to that day. To hear what God calls all the stars. All of them are named. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. There's nothing that God does not know and understand. So to say that God is not all-knowing is to say, I don't believe the Word of God. And to, to say that, that He's just whatever you want to label Him, uh, you, you deny what the Scripture teaches. These verses reveal that God knows all things. And again, I say, because He knows all things, He is able to deliver. He's able to rescue us from any situation. Um, he knows how to draw men to himself. Uh, if he knows all things, he knows exactly how to appeal to men. Now, see, that would, that would leave a big question, wouldn't it? What's the question? If God knows how to draw all men to him, what's the question? Why aren't they drawn to Exactly. Why are not men drawn to God? Yes, sir. Because he's given us all free will. He's given us free will. We have the ability to choose. But he still no say again. They're foolish hearts. You know, I think uh, also we, we fail to account how much uh, God can be drawing us or drawing an individual, but they can be so deep in sin that they are blinded to certain aspects. 
you know, in this world we say, well, you know, just the luck of the draw. You know, just fortune shined on me. You know, it's just the way it is. You know, I, was, I got lucky. Do we not hear that? So we, it's human reasoning that is put in there to explain the way God, to, to keep us from uh, responding to what God does. But he does know how to deal with us. He can rescue anyone. Um, now, here's another question for you. If God can rescue anyone, is it always his will to remove a person out of a situation? No. Why? I agree. We were always taught um, to the depth that you suffer is the depth you can minister. Um, some of you have gone through things that we haven't gone through, and we've gone through some things that you haven't. But it opens us up and gives us the ability, when other people are going through those situations, to minister. Uh, anything else? There is another part to that. You know, if, if, if every time we... Go ahead. Oh, that's a big one. He's teaching us to trust him. Um, trust increases our faith. Faith is how we're supposed to live. So if, if we don't uh, grow in our faith, if we don't learn to trust him, what do other people see? What are we if we don't learn to trust God? We're weak. So God allows us to go through situations to reveal himself to us, to teach us to trust, to strengthen us. You know, as you increase in faith, you're able to withstand more and more trials and tribulation. You know, I told you after we went through these last few weeks, you know, we still had things on us, but it was like a breeze. I was like, man, <laughs> you know, all that pressure disappears from the majority of the things you're, you're going under. And then what's left is like, well, this is nothing. You know, and that's how God works. Uh, I look, and, and this is going to be my two cents worth. It, it may be just be opinion and a half, but anyway. Um, I look at a lot of these uh, uh, people today that have these anxiety problems. Uh, from what my studies tell me, anxieties are based in fears. Okay? And so they have a lack of ability to trust. They're always concerned. They're always anxious about things. And I wonder, were they not allowed to go through some fear, to have to deal with some things? Now, I agree, not everybody's that way, but we have a large amount of people. That, could it be drugs? Sure, it could. Um, I think it, it's not one thing, but it's multiple. But I do believe there's things, and I, I think on my life, that I believe my parents rescued me out of, that God would have preferred me to go through. And I think now he's catching up. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being afraid. It teaches us to trust. It helps us to grow into what God would have us to be. Um, and, but the thing is, allowing that fear to regulate your life. You know, I'm not... Go ahead. Yes. She said, when I am afraid, I would trust in him. And that's the key. We need to learn to trust, to increase our faith. Well, you know, I don't like flying. I hate planes. Somebody said, what, what do you hate about them? A takeoff, landing, and everything in between. Have, have no, considerate, no, no desire to be on one. I think Vera liked flying until she flew with me. <clears throat> I have now ruined her. But this last time, as I said, it was probably the best flights I've had because I kept, I kept thinking. I said, Lord, I'm in the hollow of your hand. Just don't let it down. Just keep it going. But you learn to trust. You know, there's, there's, uh, there's other people who have no problem with flying. Enjoy it. Love it. I talk to um, a pastor. He says, I fly everywhere. I do all my, my sermons. And, you know, he's got all his books out. And he's got his phone. And he's going, I'm thinking, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just get me there. I'll do it when I get there. But, you know, as we grow, we change. And so anyway, let's continue to pray. Either I don't have to fly again or I continue to change. 
I think God would prefer us to go through the trial. I think in most cases he wants us to go through so he can walk with us, teach us, grow us, make us more the child of God. You know, um, deliverance by God for his children is not really a rare thing. But I think in our day and age it's, it's, it's more rare than what it used to be. And maybe I'm wrong. But I, I see a, a lack of of real faith a lot of times in, in small things. And I'm like, why don't we trust God more? And I, I see it in my life too, don't get me wrong. So I'm, well, why don't we trust Him more? Why don't I have more victory in this area? Um, I don't believe God won't spoil children. I think He wants children who are strong, who are growing, who are increasing in their strength and their ability to, uh, to minister, you know, to, to walk. I, I Psalms 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Forget about the rod and thy staff. They comfort me, you know. We forget these things. Um, I'm going to take a little detour in the middle a little bit because this thought come to me while I was thinking on being children of God and being spalled. Um, we need to learn how to serve God. We need to be servants in His family. So in, in those capacities, we need to learn how to serve and trust him and then and be uh, how do I want to say that? Uh, a profitable part of his family, uh, serve each other. Um, my mind began to take some, some turns and I began to think of, of children, um, both of, of pastors and people, uh, both from my family, different just children over the years that I've seen and um, I remember there was in McDonald's, there was a little uh, fella come in. Uh, he actually, his, somebody had brought him through the drive through And um, I was taking the order, you know, the headphones. You know, so, and it sounded like 100 kids back there. I mean, and I just finally told him, I said, if you'll drive up, I'll take your order at the window, and I'll fill it. There was one child in there, one. And then I had some friends of mine, and, 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 and I have two that I remember quite vividly, and these people have six to seven I think both of them have either six, seven, it may be eight and one, but anyway, they come through the drive through and it was, I heard them talking and I asked them, I said, y'all on a date tonight? That's that southern accent, y'all on a date? And they laughed. They pulled around, there's a car full of kids. I think they had a few from other families. You know, they had trained their kids and I didn't even know they was there. That's what God wants of us. He wants us to be trained up in the way we should go. He don't want complainers. He doesn't want us to be lazy. He, you understand, he wants uh, those who are fit for the labor. Now, here's where I get to meddling. I began to think on that. And how often does the world tell us that kids should not labor? Kid, you see where I'm going? That kids shouldn't do anything. They should, you just, you know, your kids should be on vacation perpetually, I guess. I, I'll never forget Elizabeth Elliot. She said when she was coming up, they were around the table while the elders eat or the uncles and aunts and stuff, and they would be praying for them to leave some food. You know, but you understand, they served. But we've gotten to an age where if we do that, it's child labor. We're abusing our kids. That put me on the warpath pretty quick, okay? Uh, let me explain something. Well, I'll tell you what. You give me a definition. What is abuse? What would you define as abuse? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Over, like, overly punishing kids while you're angry. Um, why you're angry is, is really a good indication that you're probably doing it wrong. You're right. Um, I think, first of all, we, we need to define abuse. There's three areas. There's a spiritual, an emotional, and there's a physical. I think you can abuse your kid in all three of those areas or just one of them. But I think you can. I think in, in our day and age, they, they focus mostly on the emotional and the physical. They leave off the spiritual because they don't see it. They're unsaved. They're, they're unbelievers. Um, but I do think you can break the spirit of a child. Um, I was always taught 
And, and it's interesting, I was a child and my dad would say this. Uh, he said, you never intend in punishment to break the spirit of the child, just the will. I never forgot that. You know what I found out later? The Bible teaches the same thing. You don't break the spirit. You don't want to break the child. You want to bring their will into conformity with yours. The only way you accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior is you conformed your will to His. You had to agree with God. Your whole life as a Christian is continually conforming your will to God. So to see, there's nothing wrong with changing or, or breaking the will. I can remember Dad spanking me at times and I would refuse to cry. And it just got worse. And finally I figured out, if I don't cry, this is not going to stop. You know? And that's what he was waiting on. Cry. And then it was over. And he would explain it. I didn't want to do this, but you would not. You know, that was my will against his. You know what? Sometimes it's your will against God. And he takes, he wants you to go through. He doesn't want to take you around. He wants you to go through and learn to trust him and learn to accept his will. You know, my idea of a, of child abuse is, is, has nothing to do with labor. I don't think there's anything wrong with a child laboring. I do think there's something wrong uh, when that labor results in um, harm to that child. Now, let me read something to you. Uh, this is the, the, from uh, Wikipedia off the internet. It says, child abuse, also called child endangerment or child maltreatment, is physical, sexual, or psychological maltreatment or neglect of a child or children, especially by a parent or caregiver. Child abuse may include any act or failure to act by a parent or caregiver that results in actual or potential harm to a child and can occur in a child's home, in the organization, schools, communities the child interacts with. Now, for the most part, I like that definition. But there's really something that stands out to me. Did anybody catch it? Does it well, does it stand out to anybody else? The part that I don't like is that it results in actual or potential harm. That's pretty subjective potential. Kids can work. My dad used to give me a sling bait. I used to cut with a lawnmower. There's a potential to harm there. Mm. That's subjected to whoever's looking on. The government says, you can't treat your child that way. The gov you understand. Somebody about to... Yes. And you, and there's two, there's two sides of this too. The mother. Let's don't, let's don't let him get hurt. The father says, "Go rub dirt in it." You know, <laughs> let him do it. If he gets hurt, he won't do it again. Right? There's a balance between the two. The mother needs to loosen up, and the father at times needs to tighten up. But that's, that's where God gives us the wisdom. He gives, that's where he gives us each other as far as the husband and wife in the marriage. But I think you really need to be careful with the potential to harm. There's always a potential to harm the child. That's why we're parents. That's why we overwatch. By the way, God is your parent. He understands there's a potential for you to get harmed in every situation. And he's watching over you. And we have to accept that and trust God that doesn't. And by the way, there's some situations that happened in life. You're thinking, where was the Lord in all this? Well, he was right there. He was right there. He didn't leave you alone. He didn't let you go through it alone. And then sometimes we think, oh, yeah, he did. No, he didn't. And by the way, to believe that, you're going to need to take it by faith. Because some situations are pretty tough. There's people in here. And I don't even have to ask. I know because of the amount of people we got. You've been in some pretty difficult situations with loved ones, with other people. Um, you know, I can rattle off a few things in, that happened in my life. Had nothing to do with my family, but pretty tough situations. God never left you. He never forsook you. He was always there. And you're going to have to learn to trust that. Um, I think a, a abuse, in my mind, is always intended to harm, 
to take advantage of, whether it be spiritually, physically, or emotionally. Their intent is to do harm. They don't care about that individual. All they want is what they want. And you, you really, praise the Lord, he's not that way. He wants us to grow. He wants to have a, a better relationship. Um, I'm not going to go any further than that, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm ill-prepared, and I'm not really the one to get into all the, the aspects of abuse, but that was, that was my idea um, of that. Now, with that, I'll say this. I think a lot of parents abuse their children spiritually when they don't teach them the things of God. I think that's spiritual abuse. Because they don't, I, I honestly believe we prepare our children by discipline, by punishment, and by the structure we give them, uh, spending time, spending devotions, all, all these things that God tells us we should do, that is in preparation for them to accept Christ. All right, now let's go back to what I said about punishment. What's the idea about punishment? What, do you, what is the purpose of punishment? Okay, it was roundabout. It wasn't that plain. Somebody said something? To redirect. To redirect. To redirect. To bring your child's will into... Into what? Submission. Into submission, but I was trying to, to, use, to, in, to reconcile their will with your will is what I was really wanting to say. But you're right. It's submission. And so when God allows things in, in our life, is to reconcile our will with His will. So our whole purpose when God and by the way kids are a heritage of the Lord the Bible tells us quite plainly so if that's true then their whole lives we are to prepare them that they might know God so that our whole life uh, the, what punishment we do what we instill in them from the word of God everything we do is to prepare them to accept his will to reconcile their will to God that's it now, that includes a lot of things. I simplified it a lot. But uh, there's a lot of things in that. And so I think we, we allow society to tell us this is wrong. This is, you, know, you shouldn't do that with your kids. But when we should be studying the Bible and asking God what he would have us do. You know, let's, let's raise up our kids in the way they should go. To be a productive member of society. Uh, and by the way, that's two-sided. They can either be productive or dependent. I want uh, independent kids. As a matter of fact, my wife will attest to this. The goal of every ministry I've ever had, including this one, is to make independent Christians. Not dependent. Don't come to me and ask me what God's will is for your life. I don't know. You know, I have no idea. I can tell you what His general will is for all of us. Be in the Word of God, reading, memorizing, taking time with Him every morning, praying, you know, growing. That's, that's for everybody. But for you independently, I, I, I don't know, you know. But I can tell you this, if you're not learning, if you're not spending time and, and haven't uh, been doing the general will of God, you'll never know the specific will. If you miss the basics, you'll never get into, you know, if you don't know what 2 plus 2 is, you're not going to calculus. Okay, he's just, they're not going to put you on a rocket ship. You know, um, the foundation, and I'm going to say this, and I want you to understand, that this has been my experience, and this is, this is a firm belief in me. The foundation for any ministry, for anybody, is learning to serve. He that is faithful in little, be faithful in much. If you're not willing to do the little things, you're not going to do the big things. Uh, my first ministry... Cutting on a light. Half the time or better, she had to tell me. I'm not teasing. I could not remember. Just go cut that light on. The pastor's coming. You didn't get the light. Take off. You know. <laughs> Sometimes the pastor would get there right for me. But, but you, you learn. You know, and you grow. And that's part of it. You're learning to, to serve. Um, I was uh, often asked to speak with them. Um, in churches that have youth, they say, we'd like you to speak to youth. That's intimidating, by the way, to have to speak to youth. You know, what, what can I tell them? And, and the Lord just laid it on my heart. Teach them how to serve. I said it here. When you walk in here and uh, somebody comes in and they can't find the page number, 
That's serving God. You walk in here and there's trash on the floor. Pick it up, throw it in the trash can. That's serving God. Service to God is simply doing what God shows you to do. And I was unable. That was, yeah. Like I said, when the, when 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 the will is gone, uh, the, it gets it gets taken care of in, in the midst of sickness. To, yeah, I mean, anyway, thank you again for all that. But you understand what I'm saying. It's it's just a matter of of uh, teaching them, raising them up in the path they should go in. And by the way, how many of you remember? Uh, your parents teaching you how to eat with a fork and knife. Okay, some of you didn't raise your hand. And I'm sorry your memory's failing. But my parents, I remember I was eating with my fork and the food kept falling off. And Daddy got a little aggravated with me. He said, there's no hooks on the end, you're not fishing. <laughs> I couldn't have been six years old, okay? I couldn't have been. And I, I, I never forgot that. And he took the time to, to do that. How many of you remember your parents teaching you how to brush your teeth? Oh, come on now. There's more than that. <clears throat> anyway, I remember that too. After he did it twice, I didn't want him to do it no more. <laughs> I thought he put a wire brush in my mouth and run that thing around. I, I knew what he was doing, though. He was showing me what to do and showing me it could be a lot more comfortable if I did it myself. <laughs> he was right. I found that out. It is. We do. We teach these things. If you're not teaching them, they will never know. We pass on our faith to the next generation. We say, well, they'll, they'll figure it out. Oh, don't, don't depend on that. Don't depend on that. Because their figuring out could cost them a, a lifetime in prison. Oh, you know, I wish I'd have never done that. I wish I'd have had a different life. No, we want to pass on what we know to the next generation. And if we pass it on, then they have the responsibility to pass it on. What we miss... We need to pray that God would bring somebody in their life to teach them and, and pass it on through them. It's kind of funny, but it, it is. It's interesting. Um, uh, it goes on to say, it says he knows how to deliver the God out of temptations. The idea is rescue, to see a way out, to draw into themselves um, the believers, the godly from temptations. It not say anything about an ungodly, does it? Those that are trying, those that are applying their self to live for God, He will deliver them, show them a way out. But you've got to be willing. You know, uh, as I said uh, and have said many times, we see so many, uh, we get in a situation and we get that old tunnel vision, we can only see one way out. God has a way if we'll just come to Him and trust Him. He'll work it out for us. Um, the closer we get to Him, the easier these things will be seen by us. Um, any questions? I'm really out of time. I had a little bit more. Any questions? Any any input you want to give before we stop? All right. Let's go ahead and um and stop then.